Sexy Sims, and we are back with more Code Realize Future Blessings, and we're in Lupin's Route. Yay! This is like the first part of a full of Lupin's Route, because we started it at the end of St. Germain's Route, because St. Germain's Route seemed to be kind of short. Huh. Anyway, lost in thoughts of the past, I barely register Lupin narrow his eyes intent on something ahead. We, we read that book the last part, but that's okay. Damn. They made their move while we were standing around gabbing in our rose-tinted spectacles. I listen carefully. The faint sound of footfalls further down the hall tickles my eardrums. One, no, two. One of them was more adept than his companion at moving silently, but there could be no doubt. I imagine Lupin can hear them much clearer than I. They made it inside. I'd vastly prefer stealth to an all-out frontal fracas inside the mansion, but... Let me take care of them. It won't be my first dance with a Twilight operative. Ha <laughs> ha. Très bien. You are handy. Th really, that's something you should say to your wife. Yeah, you're handy. You go ahead and distract them, and I'll get away so they don't hurt my beautiful face. The sound of footsteps draws... Footsteps. Footsteps draw closer. Enemies. If it had been... S it had been six months. I feel butterflies in my stomach. Right. I'll make the first move. Distract their attention. I need you to strike while they're focused on me. Ideally, you take them out with your first attack, but if you miss, I'm right there behind you. Got it. I'm ready when you are. We quietly advance to the T-junction at the end of the hallway, each of us taking position in niches to the left and right. Lupin smooth, uh, smoothly produces his stick, balancing on the balls of his feet to spring forward and deliver a split-second strike. <laughs> stick! A fashionable item that English gentlemen love to carry, and also used as a weapon of self-defense. Lupin's is equipped with a variety of contraptions such as gash, gas, flash bombs, and the like. I was a gash because I was seeing, I saw the flash as I was reading gash, gas. Oh my God! So I just did it again. Such as gas, flash bombs, and the like. Hi, bird. Just as two shadows pierce the silver light in the moon, silver light of the moon. I can't read. Lupin hurdles forward so quickly his legs seem spring-loaded. Eat stick! Lupin delivers a devastating blow, but the Twilight Soldier twists in superhuman fashion, flowing into an acrobatic kick. Lupin wears a blank look of shock, his trademark weapon wrenched from his hands before he could activate its mechanism. Whoa, whoa! Did you just dodge that? Lupin, move! I counter with a chop, the soldier still off balance from his flying kick, but the Twilight Operative whips his hands down flat on my shoulders, leapfrogging over me to join his partner. No! Am I that rusty? No, it's worse. This is no mere man. Lupin glared at the unusual soldier, his expression betraying a state of heightened caution. Perhaps even suspicion. He's like, Van Helsing, what the fuck? And he's like, damn it! Utterly transfixed by this strange tableau, I forget to even breathe. It certainly feels like these men are the only intruders. I sense no other hostile presence nearby, but it happened in a split second. The agent who seemed to be ranking officer leaned towards Lupin and closed the space between them faster than the eye could see. Lupin avoids the soldier's fist by a hair's breadth, only to bear the full brunt of a vicious shoulder tackle an instant later. Gah! She's like, wait, I know that move! Lupin! I was able to break Lupin's fall from behind and glowered at the Twilight soldiers peering over his shoulder. What are you here for? Vengeance for Twilight? The Horologium or something else entirely? Uh, we're here for... Love. Come again. I knew it, Lupin. I knew it. You're... Just then, Lupin's uh, imminent diatribe was cut short by the pitter-patter of little feet clacking down the hallway. <laughs> Cece, stay back! <laughs> Thoroughly ignoring my command to heal, Cece barrels through the hall and smashes into the younger soldier at top speed. <laughs> Despite Cece's valiant gambit, the soldier only stumbles, ensnaring Cece in his grip. Cece! I'm just, i just really wondering if this is Van Helsing. Like, which one's... 
I, I don't, I'm just gonna read it in a normal voice because I'm not sure which who's who in this, but like, who would have guessed this mangy cur capable of such a thing? Hurtling itself at a Twilight Soldier without hesitation. I dare say the mongrel has a more heroic bearing than the great gentleman thief, Arsene Lupin. Ha! Huh. You would barge in front of nowhere to impugn my honor? You would barge in from nowhere to impugn my honor? Surely you have some other purpose here, Monsieur Twilight Soldier. Spare me the petty small tactics. You know full well while we're here. Hand the girl over. Heh. <laughs> Piss off. You know full well you can't have her. Lupin pulls me close, his voice strident and fearless. So listen up and listen good. Spacey's my girl. My beloved, the most precious treasure on earth. Her most charming smile, her most radiant expression, all of her. All mine. I don't care who you are. I don't even care if you're a member of my own gang. You'll never have her. Never in a million years. I feel heat blooming on my cheeks. In what may very well be a life or death situation, Lupin remains as self-assured as ever. Thinking back, I realize this is the man he's always been. No matter what the obstacle, no matter what dire circumstance he may find himself in, Lupin's beliefs would never be swayed. Right, Spacey? Somewhat aghast he can manage such a confident grin, I can do little but violently shake my head no. Y you know I'll cherish those words forever, but we're virtually defenseless. And who knows what Cece is... You're overreacting. He's right over there, look. Lupin nonchalantly points to the junior officer who has Cece locked in some sort of death grip, thrashing and struggling. Huh? That bark doesn't sound like a struggle. It's... <laughs> it was Deli that he went after. Whoa! Cece, can't you... Stop your gyrating! It almost seems like he's playing. Cece seems perfectly calm in the younger agent's arms, lapping contentedly away at the freakish bird mask. Wait a minute. Just a few minutes ago... I didn't feel like Cece had been caught. More like he leapt into the soldier's arms on purpose. Now then, this little charade is getting old. Hmm. Lupin takes off like a shot, dashing at the older soldier head on. The battle is back on in the blink of an eye. Strangely, Lupin begins to rummage through his pockets. Stranger still, the Twilight soldiers seem to respond by doing the same. I never did find out who had been the f who had been the faster draw. Cute. The two combatants stand perfectly still, each with an index figure cocked at the other's head. A pathetic showing, Arson Lupin. Planning on blasting a fingernail through my brain? You stole my joke, Twilight Soldier. Lose your favorite pair of shotguns. Figured us out, eh? <laughs> with a bemused chuckle, the Twilight Soldier grasps his mask and lifts it off. Oh, he's so pretty without his glasses, too. Even in that fucking... Oh, fuck. I just imagine him in that fucking Twilight suit with the high neck cape. Oh, <laughs> and Helsing, why are you so pretty? Underneath was a face I knew well. Then Helsing? I thought we'd be going tay a tay a bit longer, but no matter. Mission accomplished. All's well. Then Helsing's accomplice emerged. Cece in tow, a muffled half laugh, half sigh, drifted from the general area of his beak. He removed his own mask, and there was another face I knew quite well indeed. Oh, it was Victor, not... Uh, well, that explains why he was almost as tall, and not Deli. Anyway. I'm of the opinion we may have taken things a bit too far. <laughs> Victor, you were in on it too? I can't imagine what purpose this was meant to serve. I love that CG, though. Like, yeah. Van Helsing and Victor had cast off Twilight's grotesque military garb and were back in familiar attire. Lupin glared at them in silence, cracking his knuckles as he paced back and forth. At length, he opened his mouth to speak. Well, Van Helsing, Victor, perhaps you should explain yourselves. Uh, um, well, you're sure you won't get angry? Nah, why would I? If you give me reasons to ma that make sense, I won't lift a finger. In other words, the use of corporal punishment may be deemed necessary in the event we fail to submit adequate... Victor seems so frazzled by the idea I can barely look at him. Quizzically, I seize the moment and interrupt. My main question here is, why would you impersonate Twilight? Well, it's... Um, I'm assuming that's Deli. 
because he's like, We were sympathetic to your plight and deemed to offer assistance in your quest for a deeper, more balanced relationship. I don't know why or how, but Deli somehow joined us by dropping down from the ceiling, vampire bat style. Deli! My apologies for calling at so late an hour. It pleases me to see you both looking quite hale and hearty. Uh, thank you? Oh, no, don't tell me. Deli, they got you mixed up in this mess. Look, can anyone explain to me how a Twilight fancy dress party and pulling an ambush on friends enhances a relationship? It's lovely that I realized what was up, but what if I hadn't? We were going full bore to take you down. <laughs> ben Elsing's like, yeah. He's like, because <laughs> you could have stopped me. Whatever. Mm, I'm glad it felt real. You aren't listening. I'm asking you why it had to feel real. Ahem. Van Helsing, I need to know too, what could have possibly brought this to bear? The idea was Victor's. In order to deepen your relationship, someone had to force you into mutual life or death trauma. <laughs> and Victor's like, it really wasn't my idea. I, I just... Life or death trauma. Victor! N no, that's not it! Please don't think that I... I did say that the quickest route to mutual bonding was a shared crisis, but the two of you took it so seriously! I did say that... Oh, okay, I was like... I was like, wait a minute, are we repeating the same thing? Okay, I just hadn't skipped yet. How is that not it, pray tell? The plan I devised was pure genius. Um, so... It seems to me that we could interrogate Victor Deli and friend all night without arriving at a satisfying explanation. No kidding. Well, what about the results? Do you feel closer? <laughs> I at least know what's up, because, like, you know, but, like, Lumen's like, what the fuck? She's like, I feel stupid now. There is absolutely nothing you should be worried about in the first place. We are so, so lovey-dovey. N'importe... That's K. Is that K or... Qua? I don't know. Yeah, because it'd be like, we... Qui? Qui? K? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. I can't read French, goddammit! I don't know French! It's got weird fucking letters that don't ex that you don't say right. And I don't... I don't know how to read French, guys. Anyway. How could you ever think such a lunatic plan was worthwhile? You found no fault in it? Excuse me? Just which part of my plan was lunatic? Watching his three friends argue almost jovially, Victor spoke up wearing an exhausted half-grin. Uh, <laughs> I'm really sorry. I should have put a stop to it. Hush, Victor. It's probably not even your fault. But you definitely chose the wrong... gentleman to confide in. You're too kind. I do feel slightly less awful about it now. Despite my lightening the mood a bit, Lupin continued to scold Van Helsing and Deli with typical verve. I listened patiently, letting him grandstand as I rubbed my sleepy eyes. Alas, one more day I failed to steal Lupin's heart. We're so lovey-dovey. Yeah, well, on me, I am anyway. Bright and early the next morning, our incident behind us. The Aether transmitter is over here. Telescope and wrenches are over there. Impey, what do you want to do with this? Huh? Oh, the airship engine. That thing's pretty ginormous. I might just leave it. And again, probably should give it a once-over before I take off. Lubin might get around to using it one day. If you're going to leave it here, teach me how to look after it. I promise I'll keep it in top shape. Oh, -ho! I hear a good idea. Definitely. I'm at your disposal, Master Impey. Master Impey? Oh, I fear the most forbidden of desires may well up if you're not careful, milady. And this is the... Oh, this would be, like, Impey just being all... And moving... <gasps> being appalled. That's what's going to get it. It's just Impey being Impey. Impey being Impey. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even realize that's exactly what the thing said. I wasn't even looking at the screen when I said that. Oh, my God. That's great. It took some time to help him organize his luggage. We'd been at it since dawn. Only a few days remain until he sets off to America. The Terra Incognita, where he hopes to finally realize his dreams... He still isn't entirely sure what he'll do when he gets there, and I imagine parting will be more sorrow than sweet, but the way he shows no outward signs of concern, only optimism, it's the very definition of Impey's character. Right. Feel free to use whatever I leave behind, yeah? Of, co uh, of course. You can always think of these mirror objects as me. Tuck a wrench or a bolt under your pillow on lonely nights. Say, what if I made you a one-to-one -on -one scale Impey model that moved with... Lifelike action. 
I'm good, Impey. Wow, shut down just like that. In any case, we won't be seeing you for quite some time once you leave for America, you know. I lowered my eyes. It only struck me how sad I sounded once the words had tumbled from my mouth. It'll be like an innocent little hug. Oh, Impe hugs me, blah, blah, blah. Lupin's going to see it and get totally appalled and jealous. And like, we'll be like, really? That's all it took? They came in to try to murder us. And you're like, we're perfectly fine. And then Impe hugs me. And you're all like, I get it. Impe's kind of pervy. I get it. What's this now? Uh, what's this now, Miss Spacey? Sad that I won't be around? Of course, Impe. He said the words with his usual cheer, but I nodded glumly at the weight they carried. How could I not be? You're always so positive. You always brighten up the room. You always put a smile on my face. I wanted to learn more from you about cooking and engineering and... Ugh. <laughs> Come on, don't make me fall for you all over again. You don't want me getting the wrong idea, do you? But look here, no worry. If Milady's heart should be so troubled, I'll post love letters every single day. Every single day would be, uh... It's not like I won't be back. Oh, I've got it. If you find yourself missing me, just look up at the night sky. The night sky? Why? Because the sky's connected. I promise, we'll be looking up at the very same moon, together. Mm, that's true. Not really, because time zones, but whatever. It's a nice thought. Though it is halfway around the world, we won't be seeing the moon at the same time. Fair, okay, thank you, smart girl. Totally unnecessary observation. <laughs> He's trying to be all romantic and sweet, and I was like, yeah, time zones. But whatever, okay, nice thought. And she's like, yeah, uh, not time zones. <laughs> I'm going to fist bump my girl Spacey right there. Like, yeah, <laughs> see, we're so smart. <laughs> I'm sorry. It feels good to laugh, getting Impey's belongings in order. I just have a feeling, no matter how long this takes, this is a man who will realize his dreams. I had no way to prove it, but somehow I knew. Oh, hey, by the way, did anything happen last night? H happen? It's just Lupin wasn't his usual self. I thought maybe you two had a fight, or it wasn't exactly a fight. It was more like a raid. A what? That's unfortunate-sounding terminology. What went down while I was asleep? Uh, the thing is, I give Impey the whole story, if only because my choice of words had thoroughly discombobulated him. <laughs> discombobulated. They meant well enough, but Van Helsing and the others had staged a full-on raid. It's easy enough to talk about now, even funny, in the heat of the moment, though. It, oh, it's easy enough to talk about now, even funny, in the heat of the moment, though. It was anything but. Yeesh! Van Helsing plus romance? Talk about your caution, do not mix. We found out the hard way. Actually, romance counseling... You know there was something better. You know there was someone better on whom to come a calling. Verily, he who hath known as many loves as there are stars in the sky, that genius engineer of feminine emotion, and that makes us less likely to want to fall in love with you. I know we already did your path, but see, it's a really good thing we did it and before, because I'd be like, and that's creepy, man whore. Me, Impe Barbicane. Oh, how many of those loves ended in love's labors lost? Oh, Saint Germain. Good morning. A very good morning indeed. I come bearing elevenses, so might I suggest a brief repast for you both? St. Germain transforms a nearby crate into a makeshift tea service and began in arranging cups. The pleasant aroma, aroma of morning tea soon wafts forth with small plates of biscuits on the sides. Morning tea. The tea time taken at 11 a.m. Of as, of as a short break. It is also called elevenses because it happens at elevenses. Smart. I tilt my head, trying to think. These biscuits, I'm sure I know them from somewhere. Oh, these biscuits, aren't they? Smashing! Don't mind if I do, then. Oh, Sandy G, where did you buy these? They lose points on presentation, but they're crazy good. You heard him, Miss Spacey. St. Germain chuckles, and Impey's eyes grow wide as realization dawns. I timidly raise my hand and nod. Yes, I made these biscuits last night. Huh? Really and truly? Oh gosh. Well, that actually got me. You are so much better now. These are scrumptious. Only because I learned from the very best. And I still make plenty of mistakes. <laughs> what do they say? Failure is the mother of success, right? No problem. Keep on making those new mistakes. I do believe good Impey has blessed us with... Uh, bon Mutt. Bon Mo? Bon Mutt? I don't know. 
Failure is the mother of success, is it? St. Germain laughs gently, then turns his regard to me. They're putting way too much French in this, this version. Too much. This seems as good an opportunity as ever. Perhaps you should discuss the matter that troubles you so with Imbe. The matter that... Do you mean the relationship advice? Just so. Very few men have failed in the ways of love as spectacularly as our Impe. I'm sure his counsel will be of great use. Failed spectacularly. <gasps> you could be discussing the weather with that tone. Mr. Impe is greatly damaged by such words, St. E.G. Shortly after the three of us finish our breakfast, our break for tea, I broach the topic with Impe again. I do want you to help me think about it. How can I possibly steal Lupin's heart? Hmm, his heart, huh? I say nothing but look at Impe intently. His expression is hard to read, quite unlike him. He seems to have mixed feelings about the entire affair, but after pondering, he stands and claps his hands together. Eureka! Got it. Lupin is one thing, but Spacey, this is about your happiness. It's time for Impe to get his hands dirty. Oh dear. You're sure? Bet your bottom shilling. When it comes down to it, Lupin is my oldest friend here, and when it comes to you, Delicious, delectable you. I'm willing to get a whole lot more than my hands dirty. Just your hands will be fine. Thank you, Impe. Discussions with Impe and St. Germain continue to pace. The strategy we develop would be put into motion right away. And so, time passed with surprising swiftness. We accomplished much, and by midday I felt a bit drowsy from all the good cheer. Here goes nothing. Commencing operation. Walking with a bag under my arm, I reached for the drawing room door. Lupin sat upon a sofa. Eyes intent on the morning broadsheet, he eventually notices me and lifts his head. Typical man. You're like, I could be standing there naked, and you're like, what? Did you bring me a sandwich? Oh, you're naked. That's cool. <laughs> oh, spacey. Excellent timing. Look here, an advertisement for a new cafe. Huh? What's with the bag? Are you off somewhere? Mm-hmm. For a while. Forsooth, if only you'd said so, I would have planned the perfect afternoon sojourn. Nothing wrong with spontaneity, of course. So where was Mademoiselle hoping to go? Leave the details to your gallant escort. I am at your service. I still don't know exactly where we're going. Eh? That's unlike you, not having a plan. Well, as I say, spontaneity can be the virtue. Wait here, I'll soon be... You don't have to come with me. My words stop Lupin mid-pose as he stands up off the sofa. He furrows his brow, clearly confused, then snaps his finger as if realizing something. Taking Cece out for a walk, are you? In that case, no, I'm going on a date. Uh, a date? Very good. Of course you don't want me to... C come again? A date? A date. I'll be off then. L wait! Wait! Spacey! Hold on a... I shut the door on him, cutting off his protest with a slam of finality. I could hear quite a ruckus from beyond the closed door, but... <gasps> I mustn't be concerned. Impe knows what he's doing. Or so I reassure myself as I swiftly made for the main entrance. A great clamor followed me down the hall. In truth, I don't feel great about this. Oh my god, I'm going on a date! And you walk away and he's like... And he just threw and broke shit in that room. That's how pissed off he is. You know the whole thing is going to end up being like he's just playing calm and cool and like, you know, like, oh, yeah, no, great, awesome. You're hanging out with that girl. <laughs> I'm playing calm and cool like I'm not bothered by it. He's like playing hard to get and like trying to be calm and collected, but he's totally like obsessed with her, but he's just got to play cool. That's all it is. It's just a mask because that just proves it. When you're like, I'm going out on a date. And if he was really not worried and totally nonchalant, be like, okay, have fun. Cause I know you'll come back to me. Cause I'm fabulous. He would not have just thrown shit. He literally flipped the fuck out. Cause he is insecure. He just has to put on a calm face so that we don't know that he's got this insecurity or the obsessiveness, the in-depth love. I love it. I love it. Lupin, this is... Men, just admit your feelings. It doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, it does if you're crazy, creepy, and obsessive. But, like, don't be like, oh, I'm just totally cool. Whatever, you can go out with whoever you want. Whatever. Uh, yeah, well, that's the fastest way to make me not want to be with you. Goodbye. I'll miss being with Lupin, too. But the die is cast. If I turn back now, all of Impe's scheming, all of my friend's efforts will have been for nothing. I have to get a hold of myself. Goodbye, Lupin. Just for the nonce. I'm assuming that means now, like, you know. Resolutely, I lift my head and begin to walk. He 
He's your husband. That's the funniest part. Bright afternoon sunlight bathes the streets in warmth as I head to our meeting place. Hey, Spacey, over here! St. Germain and Impey were all smiles waving to me from a bench at one end of the square. St. Germain, Impey, I'm counting on you two today. Yes, of course, as well you may. And? How did it go with our man Lupin? I don't see him lurking around anywhere. All according to plan, I said what needed to be said, and I've been very cautious not to be tailed. Of course, if he really is serious, he'll track me down so fast it'll... Oh, I'm sure you've done enough. Our princess is nothing if not dependable. But, um, how is going on a double date supposed to bring me any closer to stealing Lupin's heart? <laughs> so glad you asked, milady. May I present the Genius Engineer's Foolproof pan Plan for Forever Romance Part 1. Love. That is the most curious of emotions, becoming more passionately inflamed the more and greater obstacles it faces. In other words, we take you out on a date and make Lupin obnoxiously jealous. Jealous? Do you really think I'll be able to steal his heart through envy? Envy is one of man's most primitive emotions, and one with tremendous bearing on romance. It's certainly plausible given Impey's... Oh, that's St. Germain, sorry. I was like, he's talking about himself. Wait. It's certainly plausible given Impey's rather well-established and straightforward desire to take you on a date. Any date. At the least, one must admit it's more a peaceable plan than sudden midnight raids, and probably more effective at that. I see. And yet, I, uh, I'm starting to feel bad for Lupin. The very act of pulling away from Lupin, ostensibly to date other people... Not to mention that I'm already feeling restless being separated from someone I've come to rely on so much. But St. Germain's smile never wavered as he shook his head. I find no problem in it whatsoever. We do have the right to do weak him a little, as it were. Yes, because Lupin is not showing proper appreciation for the happiness that should come along with capturing your heart. Whoa, St. G. A beautific smile of yours can get downright intense sometimes. Therefore, Miss Spacey, allow us to do the dirty work. We wish only happiness for the both of you. Come now, elegant demoiselle. Your hand, if I may. No, no, uh, no fair with the head start, St. G. Just watch me cozy up to her and link arms. Mm -hmm. Um, just don't go overboard, all right? Putting the plan aside for a moment, I have to admit I am looking forward to a walk with these two. It's been so long. And they in particular... We'll be parting for goodness knows how long in just a few days. Spurred on by my companions, we begin strolling down the high street. But see, I here's the thing, though. So Lupin is either going to get extremely jealous because she sees her with Impey and he knows how touchy-feely Impey is. Or he's going to be like, oh, it's just Impey, whatever. But Impey is very handsy and touchy-feely, so. Some distance from the jolly threesome, in the shadow of a nondescript building, a man and a... Oh, that's supposed to be not Lupin Ring. A man and a dog watch the infuriating scene unfold, grinding their teeth. <gasps> I love it. He's so jealous. I finally catch up with them to find what? What are they even thinking? Ignorance, it seemed, could be bliss. Unfortunately, the skillful gentleman thief could not miss Spacey's radiant smile, her joyful bearing. Ha! Huh. Curse you, Imbe. You do not get to be so familiar with her right now. And St. Germain... Your face is way too close. Much, much too close for friendly conversation. Am I wrong? Lupin clutches Cece tight as he worked himself into a froth. Indeed, it was a wonder such a suspicious-looking character had yet to attract attention from the yard. But now, in this moment, Lupin was far beyond worrying about such trifles. D damn it all! We're going after them, Cece. I don't know what's got into them, but inviting another man's wife out on a date like this... This will not stand. Ooh. I love how fucking jealous he is. It's beautiful. Shaking his fist in sheer outrage, Lupin sprints off with Cece close behind. He's gonna, like, squeeze the dog to death. Oh, my God. I love this so much. Impe, St. Germain, and I lazily walk around town. All that cannon fire from the Nautilus six months ago. This area was hit pretty hard. Rubble as far as the eye could see. Barely half a year was much too soon for the citizenry to have forgotten the bombs. Not entire burrows wreathed in flames. That uncanny blood-red sky. Infernos, melting skin, blasts of superheated air, burning throats. The very sound of the city crumbling around them. It remained all too vivid. At that crucial moment in history, London, no, the United Kingdom, the entire world, 
Humanity itself had been on the brink of madness and genocide. And in but half a year, the city is well on its way to recovery. It seems people are stronger than I ever imagined. Yes, St. Germain, I think they are. It was just as the Count said. Mountains of rubble lined the streets just weeks ago. But today, London looks almost new. None of us could deny that a cloud had lifted. The faces of passerby going about their day, faces of passersby going about their days were graced by smiles once more. The old crumples and the new springs forth on ancient foundations. Seeing the cityscape ebb and flow like this, I feel as though I could be a child playing spot the difference. I nod, looking out at the expanse of the city once more. Here and there, places brimming with memories of shared experience among friends. Getting separated from Lupin and Impe, wandering the city only to meet Victor in a back alley deep in the slums, finally settling down in St. Germain's mansion, and our confrontation with Van Helsing at the fairgrounds soon after. No sooner does one thought flit by than another takes its place. So many memories come rushing back. I met my dearest, my dear friends here, lived here, and at last became a person here. The London slowly changing before my very eyes, and the London in my mind's eye, both wavered as if seen through tears. There's something sad about so much change. There is, and yet time changes all, even our relationships to one another. Nothing can escape the inex inexorable, inexorable passage of time, my dear. I know. The mere act of acknowledging this takes all I can muster. My friends will all walk their own paths. I knew it was plain and simple fact, but that did little to quell the melancholy. Real talk. Makes me just as sad. I've spent time with all sorts of blokes, but I swear this group is the best ever. But you know, I can't freeze in place just because I'm sad. We're all chasing different futures. So... Sorry, here you are. Sorry. So, it's fine if he'll sad. Just not too sad. We could be flung into the four corners of the earth, all up to different things. But the fact we're friends is fact. This is a forever kind of deal. Impey flashes me a very Impey wink. His reassurance has made me so happy. I can feel myself beaming my most genuine smile. And it's like us just being happy with our friends and a friend love. And you know Lupin scene and he's like, Argh! they're like losing his mind. I love it. Mm -hmm. I won't argue with that. Feeling slightly less uncertainty and sorrow about the future, we continue our leisurely stroll. Change is sad, but that's precisely why the present is so important. I'm incredibly lucky to have made friends so dear the prospect of our relationships changing brings out these intense emotions. The times we were able to spend together, I'll never forget this joie de vivre, as Lupin might say. I really must thank him. Lupin spirited me away and brought me all the way here. He's the reason I met you all. If not for him, well, I wouldn't be here right now. To say nothing of becoming truly human, none of this would have ever happened. Makes sense to me. And then and now, Lupin's always been your hero. Oh, somehow I feel the man himself would blanch at that. He is ever so fond of dubbing himself the gentleman thief. Both of you have him pegged in your own ways, I think. My companions nodded at this, smiles broader than ever. Sorry. Now then, shall we turn this corner? The... The Hoi Poi? Oh, Hoi Poi? Can't stop talking about the cafe that just opened here. I don't know. Stop speaking in French. I'm assuming it's French because he's French and Lupin's French. And... Hey, look! We've been here! Spacey and her pair of bows found a table at a modish cafe on an intersection of the high street. Just how modish was it? How a la mode? 90% of the clientele were couples. That says it all as far as I'm concerned. Oh, wait. Spacey and her pair of bows found a table at a modish cafe on an intersection of the high street. I just, you know, because it went from telling about Lupin to now being him talking. Just how modish was it? How a la mode? 90% of the clientele were couples. That says it all as far as I'm concerned. I love this. Is he hiding in the bushes? Oh, look at him. He looks so sad. Oh, poor baby. Like I care. It doesn't matter one whit to us what that lot sips their tea. Where that lot sips their tea. He's, oh, he is so sad, hiding in a bush. Contented couples sing-song chatter drifts maddeningly forth from the cafe. Glancing at the terrace, I see a collection of patrons enjoying the day on their terms. 
I turn away from the dismal scene, leaning against a shrubbery with Cece in my arms, giving him a good rub. Right, Cece? <gasps> hmm, this herb tea is wonderful. You have such exquisite taste, St. Germain. If it pleases you, I am pleased in turn. You try the cake? Super tasty. Uh, I guess it's true what they say. Quality tea at a place like this means quality side menu. Oh, oh, Spacey! Have a bite of this, the Mont Blanc. Say, ah, uh, oh, this is gonna, Lupin's on fire right now. What, y you want me to say, ah? Uh, that's a little, you're fine, you're fine. Ready? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, I knew it! I knew he was gonna get rage faced. <laughs> He's beating her! I love it. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, sorry, Cece. I was just considering how best to whack some sense into that nitwit wife robbing engineer. Didn't mean to scare you. Idly petting Cece, I let out a huge sigh. Thinking about it with a, as cool a head as I can manage, there's no particular reason I should be cross with them. It was far from the first time that Ginger Numbskull had declared his undying, misguided love. And back at the mansion, Spacey takes tea with the two of them all the time. Even so... Oh dear, Miss Spacey, if you would stay just as you are. They know. <laughs> A spot of cream on your cheek. Charming, really. Look at him! I love it! He's like, ah! Hey, Cece... Do me a favor and go take a nice bite out of Count Slits for Eyes, would you? <laughs> Sorry. I almost lost my balance. Oh my god. Because St. Germain never opens his fucking eyes. And they literally just called it out. Take a nice bite out of Count Slits for Eyes, would you? It might be business as usual for that jackass Impe, but St. Germain getting in on the act. I sense intent here. Or so I mutter to myself, burying my face in Cece's fluffy fur. Look at Cece so fucking happy. I was absolutely right a moment ago. This is completely normal. Nothing strange about it. No harm, no foul. Imbe and St. Germain are acting fools and Spacey's laughing at them. Yup, normal as could be. I've convinced my head easily enough, but why can't I convince my heart? If I had any idea I'd be so immature about this, I never would have left the mansion, let alone tailed them. Ready to go home, Cece. Just as I was about to pick myself up, that very moment. I'd love to bring Lupin next time. It's such a nice little place, and being with Lupin would make it even nicer somehow. Spacey's words make me freeze. Ho-ho! <laughs> you still my jealous heart. Utterly, totally super-duper gaga for Lupin, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I love him very much. Oh, look at him blush. <laughs> no mere profession of love, but a very much to boot. You're liable to make us blush, demoiselle. After taking in Spacey's angelic smile, the Count closes his eyes completely and inquires with a chuckle. You speak of love, but love takes many forms. What is it about him that you cherish so? Mm, do I have to pare it down to one single thing? I don't think I can. Ah, I feel you there. Lupin has virtues to spare, but he sure isn't flawless. Sometimes he overdoes the theatrics and winds up paying for it. He can't stand to lose, and if I mess up, he out the abuse. If he didn't have me as a partner, the yard would have nabbed him five times over by now. Easy. Look at him, he's like, ah! Hmm, putting that last notion aside, Lupin projects maturity, but he does have a surprising number of childlike qualities. And if his faults are exploited... Debacles can arise. Take the case of good detective Sholmes, who very, ne who very nearly defeated Lupin. You know, he's like, The two vent about whatever they please, taking full advantage of my absence. But Spacey resumes her own train of thought, with a smile that seems forced. Even so, I love Lupin, flaws and all. He can get too worked up for his own good, and he's not infallible, but... Knowing that he isn't perfect... It's almost a relief. Silly girl, I've never been perfect. Not even close. I love Lupin. I really, really do, with all my heart. Her voice resonates throughout my bowed head. My most precious treasure's voice. Trying to explain what I truly feel is impossible. The limits to language are so frustrating. Word after word. 
as she continues to speak of me with such honesty, such purity, a spark alights deep inside, suffusing me with warmth. She's never been the talkative type. Even, uh, um, not even, when we're together, my heart just never stops pounding. It's only recently that she's been able to open up about her feelings. He sparks such a warmth in my soul, I can't help but smile. This remarkable girl is expressing her feelings for me, made all the more precious by the fact articulating them isn't easy. And it all adds up to one undeniable truth. I love him. Listening to her, I wonder, could there be any happiness finer than this? I love you too, mademoiselle. You're more precious to me than anything. I wanted to tell her so badly. I wish she were standing before me here and now. No, I needed to. I want to step out from behind these bushes and show her. Tell her over and over again. But, no, now is not the time. I can't project my own feelings just yet. Let they take precedence over hers. Right now, all I want is to hear what she has to say. Every last word. That's why I, I'm a little scared. It feels like I'm on the receiving end of everything. That I'm too dependent on him. Lupin saved me. He drove away my sorrow. He rescued me from solitude, banished my despair. He showed me what it is to love. He taught me what it meant to be happy. And he gave me warmth. He gives me so much, but I can't seem to offer him anything in return. It just makes me feel awful. So that's what this Get Lupin's Heart pumping deal was about, Spacey. Yes. I want us to feel like equals. Man, Cece. I love the fucking dog's face. Mon Dieu, am I a joke? I'm a joke, aren't I? And here I thought I knew her better than anyone else. It turns out, I didn't even know the first thing. I let Cece down on the cobblestones and stand up, a faint sigh escaping my lips. A couple ill-mannered friends do need a good scolding. But most importantly... There are words the woman I love deserves to hear. Spacey... Did he jump out of the bushes? Startled to hear my name, I spin towards the source of the voice. It was... Lupin, looking a bit incongruous, carrying Cece with a sheepish look on his face. L Lupin? No. Could he have been here the entire time? That would mean... Everything I just said... All the words that come tumbling out of my mouth, he would have heard them and... Suddenly I feel myself flush. I didn't dare think about what I must look like. Um, Lupin, were you listening? His silence spoke volumes. I was completely undone, speechless. Lupin had the grace to at least shift his attention toward Impey and St. Germain. And as it happened, he did not have the grace to hide his displeasure. Can't wait to hear this excuse, Impe, Saint Germain. Ah, uh, <laughs> do we really need one? You already know what's up. Indeed, we were merely lending a lovely lady a helping hand. Lupin shot me a look as if to ask, is he serious? I gave a tentative nod. Both of them helped me put this plan together. That's what the entire day's been about. F fair enough, but was all the pawing and saying ah really necessary? My, my, do I detect a hint of envy? Have it in your heart to forgive, Monsieur. Tomorrow is goodbye for a while, you know. The old Lupin would have been fuming at Impey, but he just doesn't seem to have it in him today. Instead, he releases a sigh and mutters. <sighs> Polo shenanigans one more time, and you get the stick. Heesh, very scary. Guess I'd better skip town for the States before I get a black eye, huh? Ha, <laughs> you'd better not come crying back. Crying back home, wailing about how lonely you are. You two are incorrigible. But it suits them, don't you think? Lupin and Impey goofing around. Saint Germain, the bemused witness to their antics. Such a familiar scene, but one I'm unlikely to see again soon. As I watch the once inseparable pair with a wistful smile, Impey gives Lupin an affectionate thump on the shoulder. Oh, it's as close as we get to a bro hug. I'm sorry, the day Lupin hugs anyone, it's going to be Van Helsing, because it's going to be like the most amazing, like... <gasps> 
So yeah, I'm gonna be away for a while. Just... Or Spacey, don't make her cry. You're the last man on Earth I need to hear that from. <laughs> the gentleman thief has fangs. Anyway, Spacey, if this posh uh, poser ever does make you cry, contact me immediately. I'll be on the very next airship. Sure, I don't see that happening, but I'll keep it in mind all the same. <laughs> if it ever does come to that, I'll come swooping in alongside him. Impey and St. Germain give the chagrined thief a nod and begin to take their leave. Well then, Impey, I believe the time to make our... Exunt has arrived. Exit. Yeah. Guess so. Hey, Cece! Let us take you for a walk next time. I look pointedly at the two, wishing they would stay and rescue me from this awkward situation. Uh, are you really going? We are. Enjoy the rest of your day, Spacey. You as well, Lupin. Impey waved his arms expansively while St. Germain performs an urbane bow. And with that, they're truly gone, perhaps believing their combined presence constituted a third wheel. Only Lupin and I remain. The constant din and hubble of the crowd around us suddenly feels distant. Thinking on all that Lupin heard, perfectly honest though it was, I feel awkward and out of sorts. Looping, uh, looking Lupin in the eye comes as naturally to me as drawing breath, but for some reason I can't bear to meet his gaze. Shh. He mutters something unintelligible under his breath, and then... Spacey, walk with me. Such simple, unadorned words. No, would you allow me the honor of escorting you, mademoiselle? No gallant offering of his arm. No hint of his usual manner. It's almost as if he has forgotten how to affect his customary air. Perhaps he, too, was wrestling with his thoughts. Had we been at the cafe longer than I thought? Or perhaps I lost track of the time as Lupin and I walked. It was only midday when I left the mansion, but already the, uh, the gloaming was upon our city. Crowds of pedestrians scurry around us, intent on reaching their homes before nightfall. I follow Lupin's much slower lead, squinting in the waning light of the westerly sun. Both of us seemed to be searching for words, but none escaped our lips. Neither of us knew where to start, or what topic to broach first. At a standstill of sorts, only our footsteps and the march of time continue on. Eventually the road came to its end. A cold breeze struck me, carrying with it scents of the river. Looking up, I realized we had come all the way to the banks of the Thames. Lupin still seems to have no interest in talking. Could I have upset him that badly? I did consult others about my troubles instead of bringing them to him... And today, going on that date with Impey and St. Germain, all I wanted was that he feel the same thrills to set his heart dancing as he does mine. Everything I did was for the goal of sharing our love rather than continuing to take and take. What if... What if it had all been just a nuisance to him? The indistinct outline of a ship headed upriver lets out a mournful wail, heaving up plumes of steam. Startled by the blast of sound, my introspection ends as my thoughts are pulled back to the present. At some point, we had stopped walking. Our shadows are motionless, the setting sun distorting them into mile-long columns. Hey, Spacey. Finally, Lupin turns to face me, but I can't bring myself to raise my head. I have no idea what he might say. Part of me doesn't want to hear, but I wait for him to speak nonetheless. What you were saying earlier, about your heart always pounding. Me cool as a cucumber. I did say that, but... Even now, Lupin is cool. Composure person personified. The polar opposite of what I feel. And yet he's... Do you really believe that? The few feet of empty space between us suddenly disappears and... Oh... Oh... <laughs> Lupin cups my chin with his hand. I stiffen and feel the urge to pull away, but his firm grip on my waist would not allow it. His intense, forceful embrace leaves no room for argument. Thinking back, I felt the same aggressive spark the night we met. Raise your head and look me in the eye. Then, I want you to answer me. W what are you... His eyes were so close, gleaming in the fiery light of sunset. They were exquisite, like twin shards of flawless amber. Lupin takes my hand and presses it firmly against his chest. 
I'll ask one more time, Spacey. Do you really believe I'm always calm? I... His gaze remains steady, but fairly... Uh, but fairly vibrates from the ardor within. I absentmindedly wonder if the sunset is to blame for how red his cheeks seem. I lie with words. I deceive men with a glance, but even I could never lie about this feeling. Lupin's heartbeat courses through my palm. With our bodies pressed so close, the warmth I hold most dear permeates my being. And today, somehow, it feels a bit warmer. You get it, right? I'm a master manipulator. I only project an image of calm. Inside, I'm exactly like you. Every time I touch you, my spirit soars. Just seeing you laugh makes my heart leap. With you in my arms, I couldn't put the mask on if I tried. It's true. When we're together, calm isn't even in my vocabulary. But stealing my heart? I'm afraid that's factually impossible. Why, the same thing can't be stolen twice. You took mine a long time ago. Lupin, you think this is one-sided? Don't be daft. Of course it isn't. You've given me so much more than you know, Spacey. But I... I can't imagine what that could be. What have I ever given you? One example? Your smile. The smile only I'm privy to. More lovely than a bouquet of roses. Oh. <laughs> bouquet of roses is the thing of the both games. Oh, I love it. That's perfect. That's why they chose that. Okay. You're even learning to cook for me. Not, not, not. God damn it, Tim, you ruined it. Not to mention the times we've shared. Times like right now. And beyond all else, your very existence is the greatest treasure I will ever own. Absolutely beyond price. The best damn treasure there is. My one true love. You, ma chérie. Ah, such a warm person. Being with Lupin, so very warm, so right. Happiness fairly radiates from us. I'm overwhelmed with emotion, speechless. And yet I can tell he knows. Even without words, Lupin knows how much I love him. Then something in Lupin's eyes suddenly shifts, and he purses his lips ever so slightly. So that's why I was a little miffed, you know? Was it the date? I got that they were doing it on purpose, trying to rile me up. But it turns out, I'm a lot more childish than I thought. Even though I knew it was just a gag, I got edgy, even angry. I couldn't keep it together at all. I never thought I'd get like this, especially not over a date with a couple of our best friends. Was it envy? I dare to speak the words Saint Germain had used earlier in the day. Lupin seems struck for a moment, then quietly admits, Yeah, it was. This is what envy looks like. Feeling edgy, angry, unable to keep it together. Envy must be awful. I'm so sorry, Lupin. I never meant to put you through such a horrible experience. Oh, no. I should have explained this better. The envy itself is on me. It's really not your fault. But hey, here we are. I may as well insist on a proper apology, no? Apology? I... He's gonna fucking kiss her. Yeah, yes, there you go. I have no time to prepare myself, let alone a moment to breathe. Suddenly, there's no space between us. We're one, connected to everything. Be it the poison that once plagued my body, or the, mo uh, the moist river or air that surrounds us. Past, present, and future cease to have meaning. All existence coalesces into a realm of pure love and one perfect kiss. That's all anybody ever wants, one perfect kiss. <laughs> Spend your whole life chasing it, you never get it. The magical sensation of oneness had completely engulfed my mind. It was a single kiss shared with the man I cherish above all else. A single, tender kiss standing as a testament to the joy of loving one another equally. Aww. Your gracious apology is hereby accepted, my princess. I couldn't say why, but Lupin's trademark affable grin seems brighter today. I started reading that Lupin's voice. My chest feels all warm and tingly. My heart still won't stop pounding. I'm so happy. Is it the same for you, Lupin? Sure, it's the same for me. You always get my heart pumping. 
always make me happy. Passion springs up from deep inside. I didn't know. I had no idea you felt the way I do. Well, of course you don't. I never told you, so you're off the hook. Lupin relaxes his tight embrace, but we remain holding hands, looking fondly into each other's eyes. Oh, and the way you went on and on about me during your little date with Impe and St. Germain. How much you love me and whatnot. More than enough to make me blush full on scarlet behind those bushes. <laughs> really? Well, it was the truth. <laughs> you don't say. That suits me just fine. Lupin chuckles, flashing a winning smile. Laughing together, sharing conversation like this. Once again, I reflect on these simple, everyday things that bring me so much happiness. I was worried for so long. What if I loved you more than you loved me? The worries I'd held in for so long came tumbling from my mouth in a rush. I loved him so much, but I never felt like I was giving anything back. The sheer one-sidedness of it became a serious worry, festering away inside. Yet Lupin's grin only grows broader as though to dazzle my fears into submission with charm alone. You can stop worrying, then. We love each other equally, from the bottom of our hearts. For now, and forever, I belong with you. That's why we married. Why we're man and wife. We make a beautiful family. Family. Lupin and I are already family. We do. And it makes me so happy. A marvelous sense of being blessed comes over me. It fills my heart but feels nothing like the rapid pounding of excitement. This is something more peaceful, gentle. Heat rises to my cheeks, somehow different than before. I bow my head unconsciously, unsure of what this new feeling might mean. Something wrong. No, I'm fine. I'm just happy is all. If I had to describe it, it's very much like the warmth of the sunset. I'm so glad we came here when we did. The waning orange glow surrounds me and the puzzling new feeling both making me feel a bit better. Lupin, can we still stay until the sun goes down? You bet. We can stay as long as you like. We squeeze each other's hands tighter, sealing the deal. And so we were too, watching the sunset fade into night on the banks of the Thames. I have a feeling that's the end. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, well, we're about an hour. I don't really know how much longer this part is because I kind of feel like that's the... Eh? Um, but I'm going to wrap this part up here. It's a little under an hour, but we'll come back, we'll finish it, and then we'll do the after scene. So then I don't really know how much is left in this part because I kind of feel like we wrapped it up. So what do we have left to do? I don't know. Um, you know, there always seems to be like a plot purpose you know, invest in with it before we get to the end scene. So I'm just kind of curious because I, I, I'd be surprised if this was it because then what, it's only like an hour and a half. Like that's really short. I would have expected his part to be longer. So we'll see. Um, but I'm going to wrap this part up here. I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.